where there's smoke, there's potentially fire. And if we hadn't have done what we did in the time we did it, we could have lost the boat today. So you've just got to be on your game 24-7 if you live full-time on a boat. awakened this morning as Baz what felt like stormed in because I was sound asleep going skipper you're taking us out at nine o'clock <laughs> and uh, anyway so what I'm doing now is wobbling the engine so that means checking the water for our engine that's a good level checking the oil that's just under the full mark checking the belt it's fine electricity and bilges and then we'll start the engine. Then we'll check the exhaust. A little bit of smoke. And then we're off. With the VHF radio. Push on the cobra to the VHF. Bring up the hang on the VHF. temperature and it seemed okay so I let it go. We cast off and I started to pull out from the berth. Ridiculous. There must be a like 
thank God. George Gelmer. Okay. <laughs> the fuel's run out, run out so it diesel. stopped, thank yeah. God. So we've got the slime line on at the front, and now we're being winched back to a decent position. Back to the pontoon. These guys are really awesome, they know what they're doing. Okay, if there's a bit of camera wobble, it's because my hand's shaking, because I think there's a bit of adrenaline going on in there. <laughs> well, that was certainly interesting, wasn't it? Yeah. Yeah, Jeez. like, I, I had a really strong feeling that we should go out today and, a, and a, so we talked about it last night and then we didn't really come to a conclusion and then, as I said, Baz came in and went, we're going out. I personally thought that it was to get some really good sailing footage while we've got nice weather because we are in December after all. But it turned out to be an adventure again, didn't it? <laughs> yeah, I think we made it, what, um, 100 metres from the pontoon? And then uh, I can still taste the, the acrid yeah, smell. Yeah, it's horrible, the isn't it? It's yeah. bloody awful. Uh, it looks like it's wire connected to the solenoid that's uh, started uh, uh, overheating and, and smoking. So we're going to have to get someone on board today who knows about that kind of stuff um, and tell us why it's happening. As day skipper or captain for the day, as we were coming up on deck, I said, I can smell burning rubber. And Baz went, it's probably something that's being burnt outside. And I, and I thought, well, I know, it smells like it's coming from the cabin. Well, especially because there's smoke over there. <laughs> yeah, I know. I'm, I'm, I'm not putting the blame on you. I'm, I'm actually taking responsibility because um, I decided to let it go rather than doing what I would have done on my own, which was actually see if I could find where the smell was coming from. But whether we would have found it because there was no obvious signs of smoke at that point, I don't know. Maybe, I think we probably had to go out and have that happen. Yeah. Because um, um, I don't think we could have detected it earlier. Um, luckily, we've got no wind, so it, there wasn't any issue getting back in quickly in the marinaires. Right? Yeah. Um, so what we uh, and also when we came back in, I couldn't stop the engine. Um, <laughs> the so there's a, a, some sort of engine stop short somewhere. Mm. Um, so what I did was I shut down the fuel line and just let the engine run itself dry. Um, we also switched off all of the batteries, uh, isolated all of the batteries. So now we've just basically got to find out what it is and why it's doing what it's doing. Yeah, so um, still no sailing videos I'm afraid guys. In fact I'm even <laughs> thinking of putting forward that we change it from sailing ABC to fixing ABC. <laughs> Stink down here is amazing. That burning electrical burning wire smell is just disgusting um, so what's happened is this wire here which looks like the negative wire that attaches onto that which is some sort of solenoid has gone mental uh, for no reason, uh, an unknown reason. Uh, so, yeah, we've taken that off. We'll, we'll find out from someone why it did what it did and uh, fix it. Whatever needs fixing. And the only way to stop the engine was by shutting down the fuel supply and letting it just run itself dry. So, we're going to open all the hatches, let this smelly, acrid, uh, throat burning smoke. Um, dissipate and uh, find someone who knows what they're talking about. I think we've got to know what it is. Just get this little bugger out. I bet that's never been touched yet. Hell of a lot of heat being generated around here, and this cable here is okay back to there, but this oh, right. bit, that bit goes on there. Yeah, well, it's virtually disintegrated. I know, yeah. So, what, what, what do you think? Well, without having the starter tested, you can't know for definite, but there's a lot of heat around this area. It all points to the starter motor. Right. 
I mean, the, the alternator looks fine. There's no cables no. melted there at no. all. Nothing around here. Yep. They all. I think you may have a problem with the starter motor, possibly the solenoid. Okay. So what we'll do, we'll isolate that, take the main feed off, yep. and then turn the electrics back on. So once we've got that main feed for the starter motor off, we can connect shore power and turn on power to the boat systems. <coughs> I can't believe how much of a cough I've got. Uh, <coughs> after that smoke, I, I was only here for like maybe two minutes. Yeah, I know. <coughs> smoke inhalation's bad. It is, I know. <laughs> I found that out. <laughs> yes. I mean, what we'll do now is we'll, we'll disconnect. The, uh, this is your main feed, look. No? Yeah. If the start motor is the solenoid shorted out, that there. That's your main feed. It's the most important part. That's the main feed from so the battery. That solenoid has got a short on it, that's what I think. You reckon? Well, we'll see. Okay. It's not unheard of. Right, now what, what I need to do is just to go and turn the power on. Okay. And uh, <coughs> if I shout... Just <laughs> switch it off. Switch it on. <laughs> Alright, so what I'm doing is, I'm going to put the uh, negative for the uh, onboard domestic batteries and the starter battery on. I'm going to put the uh, domestic batteries positive on and now I'm going to put the starter battery positive on. Nothing. Is that anything? Doesn't look like anything at all here. Okay. The starter motor is completely isolated now and there's no smoke. Okay. We'll give it five ten minutes. Yeah. We'll leave it. Then we'll take the starter off and we'll take it down to wide and see if we can get it. Okay. Serviced. Yeah. All right. Certainly not the day we were planning when we woke up this morning. Uh, and, you know, if you're considering this lifestyle, you, you're going to have to deal with things like this happening. Um, you know, it's not all champagne sunsets in the cockpit and, oh, hello, how are you? Oh, fabulous, darling. It's, it's shit happens really fucking quick, excuse my language, and, you know, with the smoke, there's potentially fire, and if we hadn't have done what we did in the time we did it, we could have lost the boat today. So you've just got to be on your game 24-7 if you live full-time on a boat. Once again, we've got Kev on the job, and he reckons that there's a problem in the starter motor, um, and he reckons the plunger on the solenoid has become stuck which allowed a permanent power to come from the battery and just basically burn out the cables. So what we're going to do is we're going to take off the starter motor and solenoid, uh, strip them down, give them a good look and see what we can do. Fortunately, one of the things we were concerned about was how far back the, uh, the heat was on the burning or smoking cable. Um, and you know had it affected the rest of the cables in the loom fortunately it only went back a little way and it didn't affect any other cables so we can cut off the bad end of that cable uh, and make a new cable um, so what Ken's going to do as well is he's going to sort out this bird's nest of a wiring nightmare in here and uh, Make it all nice and neat and still smell the, the, the burnt insulation off the cables uh, and this is three hours after the fact. Uh, luckily my cough is now sub subsiding. This is the spade connector that was attached to the starter motor that was actually smouldering. Well, the spade connector wasn't, it's metal, but the wire and plastic surrounding it was smouldering. And as you can see, uh, it's, it's quite badly damaged, uh, even exposing the copper wire in the middle there uh, to quite a, a fair distance and we got to this point here and that's where the heat and smoldering stopped so that's where we were able to cut the wire and uh, replace it with a new length of wire and a new spade connector but yeah so yeah that small length of cable and the amount of electrically generated heat caused that much smoke and I think I was coughing and coughing for a couple of hours afterwards and I was only down in the engine bay for less than two minutes. But the thing is, 
imagine a lot of wet wiring going smoky, you'd have no chance on a boat. So seriously think about having fire extinguishers installed in various locations around your boat. You never know when this is going to happen. So would you have used a fire extinguisher then? Uh, if I'd seen actual flames, then yes, I would have grabbed a fire extinguisher and uh, done that. Also, I think in hindsight, one of the things that I could have done to help the situation would be to instantly switch off the I uh, battery isolation switches, um, all of them, just make them negative. Um, just shut down the battery bank, because that's the only place the power's coming from, apart from the alternator. Mm -hmm. so. Any other thoughts on breathing? I don't think a mask would have helped. I mean, you know, a proper um, fireman's mask would have helped, but you know, where are you going to store that on board? You're not going to have that hanging on a coat hook, are you? Just in case this happens. So, no, just try and breathe as little as possible and stay down there as little as possible. But if you're fighting a fire, you're fighting a fire. Lesson learned. Ooh. Oh, wow. Huh. And that's that spinning around with that little cog Attached to that big cog in there. That's your flywheel. Starts the freaking engine. Yep. Far out. Right. Well, I can feel that. That's, that's a bit. It needs there's no service. lubrication on that at all. Right. Nothing. All right. What we'll do, we'll take this solenoid off. This is the starter motor, and it felt like it hadn't been taken off the engine since the engine was built 25 years ago when Kev was taking it apart. So what we're going to do is uh, get this up to Iden and have it completely serviced and hopefully, <laughs> I keep saying this don't I, hopefully this is the last thing on the engine that needs servicing and uh, <laughs> we can get some happy sailing in. <laughs> so this is the armature. This uh, armature. Uh, this coal, mm -hmm. this return, uh, maybe half hours uh, return. This how much? To okay. Uh, this. This change. Yep. This change. Okay. This change. Okay. This change. Well, that's kind of handy. Um, Iden's just shown me the uh, disassembled um, armature, starter, and solenoid setup. Um, there's a guy who has a workshop pretty close to Iden's. He's going to fix all that because that's his specialty. However, the parts um, are in Marlin Marine in Marmaris. So uh, he's just sent them a, a text or an email saying, Have you got these parts? And how soon can you get them down to us? So we wait and see. He reckons that once they've got the parts and put it all back together, it'll only take an hour. But of course, we've got to get the parts here in the first place. Right now, I'm heading further into town and I'm going to Tunahan, the car rental place that pretty much everyone in the marina uses. And I'm going to put in a reservation for a car for five days in January. So if I reserve it now, that's one thing less to worry about as we get closer to that point. Wow, Friday and town is absolutely buzzing. Love the way these chickens just wander freely along the sides of the road. Here's Mr. Big Rooster and his uh, assortment of girls. And there's even a little baby one. And somehow they managed to not get run over with cars coming up and down this main road into Cash. Good morning everybody, it is Christmas Day 2020. It's 12 degrees centigrade, which is not too bad for this time of year. Today is a bit of a special day for us as well because we get our starter motor back for our engine, which means we can get that reattached and then we can take ABC out for some adventures. We just off up to Iden's workshop where we'll collect our starter motor. And this year, Christmas Day falling on a Friday means it coincides with Market Day in Cash Town. I'm sure Angela will be up here later to get loads of fresh fruit and veggies. Well, there's Iden's van, so he's definitely in his workshop. Good night, Iden. Good night.
Mike's Mike? engine. Mike's, uh -huh. <laughs> Just following on for an another story, this is part of Mike's engine. Mm -hmm. Beautiful. You know what? <laughs> you, New Year surprise. Oh, New Year surprise. Oh, it's a shiny new one. <laughs> wow. Fantastic. Uh -huh. This only, yep. this circuit. This, this one. Circuit. Yep. Yep. Okay. Oh, you changed the screw, yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay, come on. Wow. Okay, so this one is... See. It's dead. Come to that. This, this, this is inside. It's Turkish chirp. Turkish chirp. Turkish chirp. Turkish chirp. Oh, rubbish. <laughs> <laughs> okay. This inside yeah. alternator, this yeah. bed. Dead. Okay. This bed, this inside, yeah. this inside, uh, no good work, no, good. no okay. guarantee. Yeah. So the new, this one. Okay. This one okay. here. So how, how much is this? How much? <laughs> only only 2,000. Okay. Okay? Well, that was an absolute uh, surprise from Aiden very generously he said look you know the one that you had there's so many things wrong with it that to get all parts for it um, it would just be ridiculous so he's got a brand new replacement and when I asked him how much it was thinking it's got to be more than the 2,000 lira that I paid him uh, he said no it's my gift to you uh, 2,000 lira is is enough um, so I'll just once again the generosity of the Turks is amazing, absolutely amazing. Feeling a bit teary actually. All right, back to the boat. Let's get this fitted. Well, solenoid and starter are now attached to the engine. All the wires have been reconnected, so it is time to switch on the engine. Nothing. No power. Well, we've just had our starter motor not starting problem fix fixed in literally 10 minutes. This great guy who has a workshop in town next to Aiden's place, he has come to the boat and he's... Bayram. 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 Electric man. Electrician. So if you want any electrics done on your boat, give this guy a call. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Görüşürüz. Görüşürüz. Ne problem Aydın? Okay. Okay, tamam. Just before we bring this video to a close, I'd just like to give you all a heads up as to some discussion that's been going on between a few of us boaties about crossing the Atlantic at the end of 2021. Now, of course, the biggest hurdle we've got is COVID travel restrictions or entry into other countries. So until we know what's going on there, we can't really move forward any further with that plan, but we will keep you updated as and when things develop. Also, I'd just like to say a big thank you to all of our viewers, subscribers and patrons. We've just passed the 1 million views mark. Thank you very much for watching our weekly videos and uh, making that happen for us. It's, it's just an absolutely brilliant milestone. And here's to the next 1 million views. And talking of patrons, we've got to welcome on board a very special patron this week, Jack Aubrey. And if you're fans of the movie Master and Commander, then you'll know exactly who Jack Aubrey is. Welcome aboard, Jack. I don't know whether to pipe you aboard or just salute. <laughs> In the meantime, if you enjoyed this week's video, don't forget to leave us a thumbs up. And of course, leave a comment down below if you've got any questions or comments to leave. And if you're not already a subscriber, click the subscribe button and remember to click the bell icon so that you get notified every time we release a brand new episode of Sailing ABC. Thanks for watching and take it easy.